Hi everybody, welcome to lesson one of coffee culture around the world. Today we're going to jump into learning about coffee culture by talking about the history of the coffee house. There's a debate amongst the coffee community as to whether coffee actually originated in Ethiopia or Yemen. There's evidence to support both sides of the story and we'll dive into the debate in a later lesson. For the sake of this lesson though, we're going to look past where the drink itself came from and instead focus on the origins of the coffee house. Many of the world's first coffee houses were not well documented and their existence is based largely upon myths. The first coffee house that we do know existed though is called Kiva Han. This relic of a coffee house dates all the way back to the 1470s and was located in Constantinople, an ancient city that at the time was part of the Ottoman Empire but later became present day Istanbul, Turkey. Following the lead of Kiva Han, other small coffee shops began to pop up around the Ottoman Empire. Like the modern day coffee houses, these venues were used as meeting places. Many people would meet there to enjoy the company of others or discuss business and politics while sipping on a hot cup of coffee. The owners of these coffee houses were usually wealthy merchants. Over the next 60 years, concerns about caffeine's effect on the mind began to grow as some believed that ingesting the substance could lead to foul behavior. Because of these concerns, efforts began to shut down coffee houses throughout the Ottoman Empire. Sometime around 1530, coffee houses were raided during Ramadan under the order of the Sultan. Coffee would later gain popularity again in the region, but these raids kickstarted the movement to bring coffee other places in the world. As coffee houses in the Ottoman Empire closed, they began to open up in other places nearby. In around 1600, Turkish merchants brought coffee to places like Venice. From this, Italian coffee culture grew so rapidly that we'll have an entire lesson on it later. Travelers from Venice would then bring coffee to other European countries and eventually around the rest of the world. By the beginning of the 17th century, coffee houses were introduced to England. The venues began to spread in popularity over the next 100 years or so. They continued to be used as meeting places for both social purposes and important business and political purposes. Although these coffee houses were popular in England, the drink itself never exceeded the consumption of tea. Coffee was then introduced to North America in 1668 and the first official American coffee house opened in Boston in 1676. However, tea still remained more popular than coffee for almost a hundred years because of the British influence on the American colonies. Coffee finally won its popularity contest against tea in late 1773 following the events of the Boston Tea Party. As more coffee houses opened up around the newly founded United States, the function of these venues was primarily to conduct business and the social aspects that once existed started to fade. Early American coffee culture moved from Boston to New York City, and here the Tontine Coffee House opened its doors in 1793 and was located at 82 Wall Street. The location was known to be a little sketchy as it transformed into a tavern at night and facilitated many brawls. However, it had an important role because it was the meeting place of several stockbrokers who created a pact to trade stocks directly with each other and set the foundation for what would become the New York Stock Exchange. Over the next one to two hundred years, coffee houses spread up across the world and continued to serve primarily as gathering places, but in many places, not many people were actually enjoying the taste of coffee itself. This all began to change around the 1950s when Alfred Pete, a Dutch American, worked to improve the quality of coffee and opened up his own coffee house in Berkeley, California. Pete was the first to focus on how different coffee beans from different plants in different places around the world would produce different flavor profiles. He experimented with these varieties as well as different roasting and brewing methods until he had created an art out of roasting and serving coffee. Pete began to mentor many other aspiring coffee experts including Gordon Bowker, Jerry Baldwin, and Zev Siegel. Pete's success spread beyond Berkeley and throughout the Bay Area over the next 15 years. In 1967, though, coffee culture migrated north to its new hub in Seattle, Washington, where, where Irv Siski established the Seattle University Coffee House called Last Exit on Brooklyn. Shortly after, Starbucks was founded in the same city in 1971 by none other than Alfred Pete's mentees, Gordon Bowker, Jerry Baldwin, and Zev Siegel. The three founders took what they learned from Pete and created what is now the largest coffee chain in the world. This newly founded chain of coffee houses offered a wide variety of customizable drink options that customers had never seen before. Pete eventually distanced himself from the three men because he did not agree with their darker roasting methods. All of these events, inventions, and discoveries have led to the modern day coffee house like Sagebrush. It's a very exciting and fast paced industry to be a part of and we're eager to share more about our knowledge in the following lessons. Next lesson, we'll be talking about Turkish coffee and coffee culture's impact on the Ottoman Empire. 
We also have a few other coffee related courses that you can find on our website. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. And until next time, I'm Courtney.